The pin that I'm about to make is going to take two full blanks. I have chucked up one of those blanks and my plan is to true it to 12 millimeters in diameter. For the truing process, I'll be using a 3 quarter inch roughing gouge and I'll be turning at approximately 2600 RPMs. I paused for just a moment. My blank is currently 15 millimeters in diameter. Now I know I want to take it down to 12 millimeters for the front half of the blank, but the back half of this blank is going to be used to create the cap for my pen, and I need that to be a little thicker. Uh, so I went ahead and stopped. You'll notice a mark right here. That mark is 60 millimeters from the end of the blank. This is the segment of the blank that I'll use to make my section. The rest of it will go to make the cap. So we're going to make a little mark here uh, so that we don't turn past the end of this blank because we need as much of this distance as possible or as much of this blank as possible to be able to form our cap. Using a 15 64 inch bit, that's just slightly larger than the diameter of a Parker refill, I'm going to be drilling 33.5 millimeters into my blank. Now I've made a mark on my bit, and you can see that red mark where it starts is exactly 33.5 millimeters from the end of the bit. I'm running the lathe at a little over 800 RPMs, and I'm using just a little bit of mineral oil to keep the bit cool. I'll drill a little over a quarter inch into the blank, then I'll back out, clear the bit, and re-oil it. I'm going to stop shy of the red mark. We're going to clear the bit, and then we'll, we'll make the final cut. I want to be sure to stop right at the edge of that blank so I don't want all of this debris in my way. I'm going to use a 7 64 inch drill bit. That is just a little larger than the end of the Parker refill and we're going to drill the rest of the way through our blank. Now our blank is going to be 60 millimeters in length so I've set my calipers for 60 millimeters and you'll notice the bit is barely longer than that distance. So we're going to start out by chucking the bit up, drilling in as far as we can, and then we'll slowly extend the bit from the chuck until we finish the final distance of 60 millimeters. The bit is all the way back into the chuck. We're going to make our first pass. And I'll just use the tailstock sliding it forward to make this, uh, to make this hole. We've reached the bottom. We'll go ahead and drill until the chuck just about meets. We'll clear everything. And let's advance our bit just a little bit in the chuck. And we're ready to go again. The reason why I'm advancing the bit a little bit at a time is I want it the first hole to be as straight as possible and I'm hoping to avoid the bit flexing. So we're just taking out about a little over an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch each time. 
until we're sure we've reached 60 millimeters. So let's do a quick check. It looks like we've got a little bit more to go. I've made a mark on my blank at 10.3 millimeters and now we're going to turn a tenon 10 millimeters in diameter back to the 10.3 millimeter mark on the blank. I'll be using the Jim Hines tenoning tool. This is designed for kitless pins or bespoke pins. And we're going to go ahead and turn at about 800 RPMs. I'll just use the tailstock by hand. With that, we have a perfect 10 millimeter tenon. You'll notice I did put a little bit of lubricant on the, uh, the main shaft here, and that is because the hole that I have, the 15 64 inch hole, is a little smaller than the recommended hole uh, that Jim suggests you use with the tool. However, it does work uh, if, I, if I lubricate uh, this up so that it, there is no friction. I brought my 60 degree live center up, and I've sped the lathe back up to about 2600 RPMs. What I'm going to do is cut a little relief on the back of this tenon, then we'll remove the 60 degree live center and we'll cut a chamfer on the front. As I create my chamfer, I'm going to support this with my finger and I'm just going to bring my tool up and just cut ever so slightly on the end of the blank. And that actually turned out quite nice. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, you know, you're turning that uh, and it's sticking pretty far out away from the chuck. And it is. I could put this in a collet chuck and hold it, hold it tighter. But I knew when I got done truing it that it was perfectly cylindrical and perfectly balanced. Uh, so I wanted to do the tasks of drilling uh, and, and tenon cutting while it was as perfectly balanced as possible so I could make sure it went straight through the center of the blank because if I rechucked this and got off even a hair, um, my 764 inch bit is not going to come through the end of the blank. Therefore, you're not going to have a nice centering effect at the end of your section. Using an M101 die, I'm going to go ahead and cut threads on my tenon. Once again, a little bit of mineral oil for lubrication. And we're ready to start threading. Because this particular die has a conical shape to it, it's more open on the end with the writing to accept the tenon and start the cut. I've gone ahead and flipped it around so that the back of the die is now at the end of the cutter tool, and that will allow me to recut my threads and ensure that they have the proper pitch and depth from the front of the tenon to the back. I wiped the excess mineral oil off the threads and I grabbed the body of another pin and I'm just going to test the threads and make sure we have a good tight fit. And that looks really nice. Next step, we want to go ahead and part this off of the blank. We'll flip it around, get it into its own special chuck and we'll turn it down to the proper diameter and shape that we're looking for. And there is the section blank ready to be turned. I have a special chuck here made of aluminum and it has M101 threads on it. So I'm able to thread my section right into it. You can't really see it, it's right off camera, but I've got a collet chuck holding this. It's got a half inch uh, collet in it and that fits quite nicely around that chuck. And on this end, I brought my uh, six degree live center up and I just barely have it kissing the blank. I don't want it to dig uh, into the blank and widen the hole because this is the end that the nib will come out of. Now granted this is long and I'm probably gonna end up cutting about this much off of it but I just don't want to take a chance at messing up the end of the blank. So what we're gonna do now is this particular chuck is actually about 11.8 millimeters. That is perfect. So if we turn this blank down to 11.8 on this end, and then we taper it to the, the shape that we want on this end, we're going to end up with a really nice blank that should fit easily into a standard cap.
I came in with my tool and I had the tail end of it lifted, which is a mistake. I got under the blank and I caused that little skip. I don't think that's going to hurt me. I'm going to go ahead and measure and find out where I need to cut this off. Uh, and then I'll continue to shape back because I didn't destroy the blank. I just nicked up the end of it and we really need to taper that quite a bit farther down uh, anyway. So I don't think that's going to hurt us. But let me let me get a length measurement. I brought a Parker refill over and I'm just going to remove this section from the chuck and we'll insert the refill and that little red mark is the full insertion mark and as I look down into the tip of the blank I can see that the refill is right about here so basically we're going to need to come back a little bit farther so that that ink nib can stick through so let's go ahead and we'll part off about an eighth of an inch and then we'll recheck. We're going to be very careful to support this blank with our hand as we cut this end section off. It does loosen up in the chuck just a little bit, so keep an eye on that. We're going to recheck. And you can see that the nib is right at the tip of the section. So we're going to go ahead and take about another eighth of an inch off. This is the part where I just sort of sneak up on it. You'll remember I needed 57 and uh, a half millimeters. And I went ahead and made the blank 60 millimeters. So we have a little bit to play with. And I'm just going to continue to nip that off. almost there. I'm not going to take any more off the end of the blank because as we shape it, it'll be super simple just to use a piece of sandpaper and to touch that up. So now we're ready to put this back in the chuck and finish shaping. So you can see that little catch didn't hurt us, but we've got to be super careful going forward, especially since I will not be using tailstock support for this part of the turning. First thing we're going to do is make sure that our blank is spinning true. And it is. I don't feel any vibration on this this uh, Parker refill, so let's get back to turning. I really like how this nib feels. I don't feel a lot of tool marks, which is good. That's going to make easy cleanup on sanding. I am perfectly aligned with the chuck, which means I'm, what was that, 11 something, 11.8 uh, millimeters. Let's put our refill in here. And the refill doesn't stick through quite as far as I would like it to. So we're going to have to clean this end up just a little bit. What I think we're going to do is just take a tiny bit off the end, and then we're just going to kind of work it back. I want to leave a thick wall here because I think it stands a better chance of the, the section not breaking out while you're riding, especially uh, me because I am a heavy rider and I put a lot of pressure on the, the point of my, my riding instrument and I don't want to uh, take a chance of busting out uh, the sidewall of this section. not as careful as I should have been and you can see right there where the catch starts and right there where it ends and I know exactly what caused it. Let me zoom out a little bit. If this is my part on the lathe and I bring my tool in, the tool should come in like this. Okay, with the tail end of the tool down. I came in with the tail end of the tool up and what happens is this is your center line that puts the tip below center. When the tip came in below center, it was able to grab. When it grabbed, it destroyed the blank. So I did a great job initially coming in and shaping at the right with the tool at the right elevation. And then the final step, I just got in a hurry, raised that tail end, and that's what it cost. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead off camera and I'm going to use the other half of this blank. And I'm going to go ahead and return a section. And we'll come back when the section is turned and uh, start working on the body. And we'll grab another blank to make the cap. I have recreated my section. This time I was extremely careful uh, with the angle of the tool and I had no problems. 
I've got nice extension of the the uh, tip of the pen, the roller ball. And notice how thick I left that. And I left that thick on purpose. Uh, I think a little bit of it will disappear with sanding, but it was like I mentioned earlier, I want some thickness there uh, so that if I write hard, I don't have to worry about the side of my pen breaking out. Uh, I'm ready now to sand this. I am not going to sand it on camera. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll start by using another blank. I'll put my sandpaper on the blank and I'll use that to smooth out the only place I feel tool marks are right here. I got a little bit of a tool mark, but this will ensure that I eliminate all tool marks on the blank, and then I'll finish sanding and run through the micro mesh, uh, and that should take this edge down and soften it a little bit, uh, which I think is going to help a lot. But uh, other than that, the, the uh, section feels really nice. I'll be back to show you what it looks like after I sand it and polish it. I almost forgot to mention that for sanding, I will be running the lathe around 800 RPMs. I want to slow down, especially with uh, an acrylic style blank because uh, the heat will actually melt the dust back into the blank and cause scarring. So be sure to slow your lathe down while sanding acrylics. I just finished this section. Take a look at how nice it looks. I ran through all of my grits of sandpaper from 120 up to 400. And then I ran through the micro mesh pads. After that, I put a little Renaissance wax on it and I used my buffing wheels to buff it up a little bit. And I think it turned out amazing. Let's put a refill in there. Now look at that. That is about the perfect extension on the refill. I am very happy with this, uh, how this nib turned out. I really like it and I was super careful. I promise you this time I kept the tail end of that tool down so that I could, uh, enter this piece properly and make a perfect cut. I used my blank and it is just as smooth as can be. All right, let's turn our attention now to making a body for this section. I've chucked up my second blank and I'm gonna go ahead and true it to roughly 15 millimeters. I've chucked up an S bit. Now this is the diameter bit that is recommended when you're going to drill a hole and tap it with an M10-1 tap. Uh, 1130 seconds is just a fraction smaller than this bit and would do in a pinch. The hole I'm gonna drill is 21 millimeters deep into the blank and the edge of this red mark is exactly 21 millimeters from the end of the bit. We're gonna put a little mineral oil on the end of the bit to keep the heat down and we'll be drilling at approximately 800 RPMs. I've got an M10-1 tap in my tap and die holder, and I'm ready to start cutting some threads on the inside of this blank. We're just gonna cut threads until the tap bottoms out at the 21 millimeter mark. I measured the distance from the shoulder of my nib to the end of the refill and I got roughly 52.5 millimeters. I put a mark on my drill bit at 52.5 millimeters 
and I'm going to begin drilling into the blank. This is a quarter inch bit. I'm running at about 800 RPMs, and truthfully, I'm only going to drill part way into the blank. I'll probably will drill about to this first mark. This is from another pin that I was making. I probably will drill about to this mark. Then we'll bring our nib and ink refill over, and we're going to test. And we're going to just very carefully sneak up onto the proper distance that we need to fit that nib refill into this blank. I'm going to do a quick test just to see how close we are. All right, very nice. The threads have started. Let's take our calipers and get a measurement of this gap. The gap appears to be about 8.55 millimeters. Let's insert the bit back into the blank and take a look at the difference. We are almost exactly 8.5 millimeters. Looks like we're a little wide, so we're going to drill about three quarters of the distance up to this line and test again. Oh, we've got a nice, oh, that's perfect. Look at that, and there's no play in the nib. There's no gap around the section where it meets the body. This is perfect, and look how true it spins. So everything is aligned properly. We're now ready to begin. We'll actually make a mark for the, uh, the desired length of this body, and we'll begin shaping the body. We'll bring the 60 degree live center up to support it, and we'll begin shaping the body as is to make sure we keep everything in alignment. Once we get it close to final shape, we'll flip it around onto a custom mandrel and sand and polish it. I am preparing to cut a 13 millimeter tenon, 7.9 millimeters deep into my blank. Just took my time on that one because the hole in the center of my blank was made with an S bit uh, as opposed to a quarter inch diameter hole, which is what you would normally use with this particular tool. Uh, I need to change my process around to do a quarter inch hole, cut the tenon, and then come back and uh, use the S bit to drill out the center of the blank. Before I cut threads on this tenon, I want to go ahead and put a relief on the back of it and a little chamfer on the front. I brought my uh, 60 degree live center up for some support. I do not have it jammed in there tightly. It's just loose, uh, but it's, it's there just to provide a little bit of support. I don't want to jam it in because I don't want to damage my threads. For the chamfer on the front, this is very fine. So what I'm gonna do is just use a piece of sandpaper and just basically sand a little chamfer down. I think it'd be safer because it's a pretty thin piece. That provided a nice little chamfer. Now we'll go ahead and cut our threads. I'm gonna go ahead and reverse the die, rerun the threads just to make sure that they are as sharp and as deep as they need to be. The threads look great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I didn't cut my relief deep enough on the back of the uh, tenon because the threads go almost all the way up to the shoulder. Uh, I was nervous because of how thin this is, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run my parting tool. Once again, I need the relief there. Otherwise, when I, when I put the uh, cap on the pin, it could lock down tight, and then you're gonna have to really work hard to get it off, which could cause you to uh, potentially break or damage your pin uh, cap body or tenon. So let's clean that, uh, let's clean that relief up. That looks much nicer. I grabbed the cap from another pin and I'm just going to test my threads out. Oh, that's a really nice fit. No gaps, fits right up against the shoulder. And actually those are almost the exact same diameter. All right, I'm going to flip this around and begin shaping the body of my pen. One last test. I want to make sure when I apply the section and the cap, I don't have any issues. No, it's absolutely perfect. All right, this is great. Let's uh, flip the body around and start shaping. I've got my blank flipped around. It runs very smooth 
and very stable on the mandrel. I'm going to go ahead and true this square section up, get it round, and then we'll start shaping the blank down to its final dimension. The ideal length of the pin that I'm making is going to be 90 millimeters. So from the end of this tenon, I measured off 90 millimeters and I put a mark. And I like the diameter that I'm at right now. And I'll let you know what that is. It is right at about 14.85. It's a comfortable diameter. I'm going to go down to this end and I'm going to turn with my parting tool on the outside of this line a tenon that is 10 millimeters in diameter. And then I'm going to slowly taper this blank back from 14.85 to 10 millimeters to give me the shape that I want for my final pin. I was running the lathe at about 2600 RPMs and I went ahead and rough shaped the body of my pen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to resort back to our block and we're going to put some sandpaper on there and we're going to use this to take out the tool marks and level out any of the waviness in the blank. We'll get it nice and flat. We'll also round over the end of the blank a little bit, uh, get it looking really nice with the sandpaper. I'll show it to you real quick when it's done being sanded and then we'll go after it with the micro mesh and uh, get it buffed up and looking as nice as the uh, section. Sanding speed for my lathe is right at about 800 RPMs. And you can kind of see, see the darker areas, the dust areas? That is, um, that is where the sandpaper is taking the high spots off of the blank. The shiny areas are the low spots. So by using this method, I've got a nice flat surface behind my sandpaper. Once the entire blank looks kind of uh, hazy like that, we have sanded it down and it is perfectly level from end to end. So we got a little bit of work to do right here. I got some, uh, some divots in there, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off, continue to work on this, and I'll show it to you right before I buff it. I just finished sanding through all the grits and the blank is perfectly smooth from end to end. It looks really nice. I can't wait to hit it with the micro mesh and the uh, Renaissance wax and the buffer or the buffing wheels because this thing is really gonna pop and it's gonna look so nice. So the next time you see it, uh, I will have the section and the ink refill installed and uh, it is going to look amazing. I promise you the next time you saw it, it would be assembled and here it is. Very, very happy with this pen. All that's left is to make the cap I put a brand new Parker cartridge in there and I test wrote with it and it writes incredibly well. I think this might actually be more of a rollerball cartridge. It's a blue, a blue ink and it was very nice the way it wrote. It's got a nice feel. My fingers are not touching the uh, threads or the shoulder when I'm writing and I like that because it's more comfortable. I do apologize for my hands when I was buffing. Uh, <laughs> buffing wheels got my hands a little dirty so please excuse that. Let's go ahead and move on now and let's uh, make a cap. I've got a piece of a blank here and I do believe it's going to be long enough to make a cap out of. If I place it against the shoulder of my the body of my pen, there's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of length left uh, as well as quite a bit of thickness of the blank. So I think it's going to be just fine. 
I'm going to go ahead and chuck it up in this collet chuck. We're going to true it up and then we'll start uh, drilling and tapping our holes to make a cap for our pen. We're going to start by drilling a 7 16 inch hole about 32 millimeters deep into our blank. If we take a look at 32 millimeters, you can see 31.92, just it's close. It's not quite the full length of the blank and we're still about the same thickness, a little shy of this bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, uh, this bit into about 36 millimeters. I already had that mark on my bit from a previous project. Now my blank tapers to about nine millimeters uh, at this depth. So I'm going to take a 25 64 inch bit and we're going to drill a little over a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch in to the blank. I'm going to take a depth reading inside the blank. It's about 43, uh, 43 millimeters. So we're going to take a look at our pin and at uh, you can see it's about 43.01 millimeters. So at 4301, we're right there at the end of the green. So let's take a depth measurement and right about there. Whoops, hard to do on a, that's about 825. So we're gonna drop down to a bit that is closer to eight millimeters. I grabbed a 21 64 inch bit and we're gonna do the same thing. Just go in about three eighths of an inch. What I'm trying to do is kind of taper down a little bit uh, in an effort to um, allow me to do some tapering on the outside of the blank. If I use the same large bit all the way down, uh, it's gonna be difficult to taper the end of the blank. Let's take a quick peek at our depth. Our depth is 47.45. If we take a look at our blank at 47.45, you can see we're right down toward the tip of the blank. So we'll take a measurement right about here. That's about seven millimeters. So we're gonna drop down to a little smaller bit. I've grabbed a nine thirty seconds inch bit. Let's go ahead and take it about three eighths of an inch in. Okay, we're at about 52.21. If I take a look at my blank, for 52.21, you can see I am super close to the tip. I'm gonna drop down to a small bit and uh, go ahead and put about 3 eighths of an inch in there and we should be in good shape. I grabbed my trusty 15 64 inch bit and let's give this just a little bit of a, of a crank. There we go. Now, if we're lucky, I should be able to measure and this should be a little over the depth that we need. A quick measurement shows that we are 56.50 millimeters deep into our blank or our body of our pen. And you can see we are well past the end of our uh, section and ink refill. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this from the lathe. We're going to put a mark on the blank at 56.50 millimeters. We're going to flip it around into a custom chuck and we're going to begin turning this to shape so that we can make it or prepare it for our pen. Before we do that though, we still need to go ahead and cut our threads into the end of our uh, cap. So let's uh, drill and prepare to thread the end of this blank. I've chucked up a 12 millimeter bit. Maybe a little hard to see, but I've put a mark at 30 millimeters and we're gonna drill 30 millimeters into the end of our blank. I've got an M13.8 tap in my tap and die holder and I'm going to go ahead and tap some holes. Ideally, I would have liked to have drilled the hole in this blank to about 12 and a half millimeters, uh, but 12 is the largest bit that I have. So we're going to have to make it work. And what that means is I'll probably run the threads two or three times uh, to sort of uh, clean them up, loosen them up and prepare them for the uh, pin body.
I've brought my pin over. We're ready for a test fit. And cleaning those threads seem to work nicely. That is a really nice fit. Runs smooth on the lathe. We're ready now to start shaping the cap. So we're gonna remove it from uh, the collar chuck. We're gonna get it installed in its very own uh, custom mandrel, and then we'll shape it. I could not find my mandrel for turning pin caps, so I went ahead and made one. It's just a piece of uh, material, and I turned it down to 13 millimeters, put some threads on it. It'll be good enough to get me through one, maybe two pins before it wears out. If you see this line right here, this is the internal dimension of our blank. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I, that is where the hole stops. So we don't wanna go and cut our blank off there. We wanna part our blank off somewhere out here. For now, I'm gonna just face the end of this off so that I can bring up my 60 degree live center and steady it and uh, I'll lock the calipers down so that I can measure that dimension a little later on and then we'll just part the end section off where the 60 degree live center uh, made a divot in the end of the blank. grabbed another set of calipers and I marked the the shoulder on my uh, body so that I can attempt to turn this down to roughly that same dimension. I'd like it to match as closely as possible. I'm measuring with the calipers in an effort to get this as close as possible, but to be honest, I think actually putting it uh, next, ooh, that's nice. We are super close on that. Um, I'm thinking one tiny little pass, which you guys know what that means for me, uh, but man, I think that feels really nice. I'm super close. Yeah. I may, I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold off on this. I'm not gonna make another pass down here, I don't think. I'll sand that because I think by sanding, I can get that pretty darn close uh, to fitting that pin perfectly. Inside of the pin, I've still got quite a bit of meat. I'm looking pretty thin up in here, so I don't wanna take too much more off. Uh, I could probably up in this top part of the blank, do just a little bit more tapering, which is what I would really like to do. So we're gonna taper up there and uh, then we're gonna start sanding. I didn't have the camera on there for a few minutes, but I've just really been shaping this outer part here. And I think I'm ready to go ahead and part this off and uh, then we'll be ready to start sanding. I think that's it. Um, ah, I really would like to have taken a bit more thickness out of this area here. I don't know if I can do it. We're going to try. Nope, we can't. Um, I've already taken my uh, support off the end of it. I really could use a little more thickness out of there. I think I'll try to sand that out a little bit and sort of taper that just a little more and then I'll round this cap over. Uh, let me get the sandpaper and get started and I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like right before I begin the micro mesh. I just finished sanding the cap. It is ready for micro mesh. I'm going to do a quick test on the body of the pin or with the body of the pin. Oh, that is nice. That is really nice. Take a look at that. All right, let me get this thing micro meshed and I'll come back and show you what it looks like uh, after I get it micro meshed and polished. We'll go ahead and attach it to the pin and take a nice, nice long look at uh, how it turned out. Here is the finished pin. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Let you get a look at the cap in there. There's the back end of the pin. 
It's still a little tight. It needs to be worked in a little bit. I'll put a little wax on these threads and work it, and that should help uh, help loosen it up. But uh, I'd rather it be very tight with the threads than loose. I love the way, I mean, isn't that pretty how that green shines? Really, really happy with how this pen turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't shoot an intro because it's a long video. I was trying to save time, so I won't waste a lot of time here on the outro. I've got the pen. I want to say thank you to everyone for joining me tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening.